Hey everybody, um, my name is Emily. At this point there's nobody watching, which is totally fine with me, but um, my name is Emily and I am the host of the Knitting Butterflies podcast, which is a podcast all about knitting and crochet as well as photography and life stuff that I have going on. So, um, hey Sparky Spud, how are you? So I thought I would do, I'm kind of trying to figure out what to use this Periscope thing for. Hey there! Um, I'm trying to figure out what to use Periscope for, like in a way that's really beneficial for you guys and a little bit different than just like, hi, than just like a normal podcast. So I thought what might be kind of fun, and this is open to anybody, whether you listen to the Knitting Butterflies podcast or not, would be um, to answer any questions that you have about photography. Um, I have my camera right here, um, and if you have questions about how to use your camera or um, how to... Um, like how to use your camera, how to look at light, how to look at modeling, how to, um, any, any of that kind of stuff. I thought it would be fun to answer your questions. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. In the meantime, I'm just going to hang out here and drink some soda because I enjoy it. So, um, I don't know. How are you guys doing? Sparky Spud, did you go to Omaha Sheep and Wool? Or Iowa Sheep and Wool, I think that's what it was. I don't know. Um, just a while ago. Hey there, how are you? Hi. Hey, Danny. <laughs> so for those of you just joining, um, I thought it might be kind of fun to just do a Periscope where I answer any questions that you might have about photography. So, oh, that's right. I forgot that you were having a baby. Have you had your baby yet? I can't remember. I feel like it was really recently that you had one. But um, So I have my camera here, and if anybody has questions on how I use it or how to use your camera or if you have lighting questions or um, exposure stuff or anything like that, I am here to answer questions. And I'm going to, this is kind of, oh good, I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Yay! And congratulations on your baby. Um, I'm glad you enjoyed it. The last one was really long, like really long. I actually still have some of my setup going. I had to bust out the big old white seamless paper for the rest of that shoot because um, I was photographing for Buju Basin. I was photographing all of their Himalayan trail, which is 24 different colors. And I just did not have a surface that was big enough to photograph all of them. So like I was working on their photography. I, um, I know it was so amazing. <laughs> I had to give it back to him the next day and I was like, I don't want to, but, um, so I was photographing his stuff and I was like, oh, I have to turn in everything tomorrow. So I actually did a lot more group photos after I did my Periscope, but I did it at like two in the morning. I was up, I stayed up from midnight. My husband went to bed at like 11 and then I was like, okay, I'm going to stay up because the O-Loops yarn was going up for sale at 1 a.m. my time. And I was like, you know, what? I'm not even going to bother going to bed. I'm just going to, um, to stay up and catch the O-Loops release when they release all their Harry Potter yarn. And I was one of the first people that got yarn. Thank goodness I had my pick of whatever I wanted. But um, yes, they did want all their yarn back. They, um, it's, it's been fun. They've been shipping me boxes of different bases. And um, so I would do all the photography of like each individual color in the base. And then um, we talked about kind of styling that they wanted for the group shots and things like that. And so I did all their group shots and stuff. And so I took everything back to him yesterday. Hey there. And um, so he dropped off with me the final base that I haven't done, which is the Lost of Wilderness. So now I have that in my studio. Um, but I'm not ready to start working on it quite yet. I have a couple other things. So... Um, for those of you just joining us, I'm here to answer any photography questions that you may have. I am a photographer. Um, I do everything from portrait and family photography. I do commercial photography. I do um, a little bit of fashion photography. I'm not really very good at that yet, so I'm still learning that particular aspect. But if you have business questions about that kind of a business, um, I am kind of changing how I'm running my business in the near future. So I've actually shut down... Oh, it's scary to say this. I shut down my entire um, family portrait business and portrait business for the time being, actually. And so we're leaving on a trip to Michigan in a little bit. And then um, when we get back, I have some health stuff that we have to get taken care of. And so I actually shut down all of my... I didn't... I'm not doing any family sessions this year. So yes, I can give you a flash setup from... Oh, you want to... Okay, from on camera. So let me show you what I have. 
Um, but okay, so this flash right here, this is the YN 560. Oh, this is the two. Oh goodness, I didn't even realize. Wow. I didn't know that it worked with that. Okay, so this is the YN562. I actually use the YN564 more often, the IV, so it's flipped. I know that it is. But these are really inexpensive. This is like $79. And the way that you use this is you put it on the top of your camera like this. And then this little head swivels any direction that you want it to swivel and um, okay so you can do the YN 562 which is completely manual there is no automatic settings at all there's no automatic settings in this particular one at all if you buy I think the YN 760 is the model number I'm not sure but there's another version that's like a hundred dollars instead which just, you know, is like way cheaper than if you stick with like the Nikon or Canon brand that goes with your camera. Um, those start at like 300 and go up from there. So even if you buy the more expensive version of this, it's so much cheaper than, than buying the, the brand name version. So um, basically what you do is you just pop it on here and then this becomes your flash. So I'll show you kind of what it does. I prefer Nikon simply because... How do I explain this? When I got my first DSLR, I got it as a gift. My husband and a bunch of our friends and family pooled together and bought me my first DSLR for my 25th birthday. And it happened to be a Nikon because they bought it from a friend who was selling one of his used. So that's why I stay with Nikon. Um, I think they both have really great things and really not so great things. Um, but I prefer Nikon. I stick, I have stuck with Nikon. Um, all the cameras that I have in the future are going to be Nikon because they're both they're both good systems. What is up with this? They're both very good systems. I knew that was backwards. And so I knew, um, I just know that I'll, I'll be sticking with them forever. So anyway, so let's see if I can get this to work. Okay, that is how it goes. It just looked backwards for some reason and I don't understand why. But there's these little like things on the top of your camera right there, which normally this should be covered if you don't have a flash on there's a little thing that you can cover it because those are sensors. And so you plug this in just like this. This um, flash, here's one thing I like better than the Nikon version because I have a Nikon version flash. I have a Nikon 50DX, I think is what it's called. Um, and that takes really expensive batteries. They're like $10 a battery or $5 a battery. And I blow through so many batteries. These take AA. And then they also have a battery pack you can buy for like another 60 bucks if you want that's rechargeable. So, um, so I like this one comparatively. This is a really, really basic. Oh, that's why. This is a slave. Okay. That exp Okay, sorry. I'm talking to myself. Okay. So this is an extremely basic version of the flash. I'll walk you through. So this is the level of power. Right now it's at 164th and then you can power at 132nd, 116th, 18th, quarter, half, full power, and then it drops down to the least amount of power. The zoom button, if you see this changes, this is zooming in and this is zooming out. And what this does is it changes can you see that happening? Okay, did you see that right there? So this is zoomed out all the way, which means that when you fire it, um, when you fire it, the light is going to go like this. It's like a lens that um, is going to capture the most amount of light. So the light is going to go like this. And then as you zoom in, you can see that it's kind of changing. Then the light is going to go like this, and so then it will fire this direction. So if you want your flash to cover a lot of area, then you zoom out all the way in your flash and it will go poof. And then if you want it to zoom in, if you want it to only be like on this area in front of you, then you zoom in and the light will only fall on that particular subject. Um, okay, so I actually have two of these. I found my, my N564. I forgot I had this on a special mode. Let me show you that real quick. Okay, so 
This is the YM 564. You can see it has a few more buttons than the 562. They don't sell these anymore, um, but I have a whole bunch of them. I, I think I bought four of them just because I use them all the time. So this one has a few more buttons. You always hold them down to turn it on like this. So you can see already that there's some more features on this, including this little doohickey. This is a wireless transmitter. So one thing I really like about the YN564 is that um, you can use it with the Young Nuo flash transmitter and they will talk to each other. Um, there are other transmitters that you can put underneath your flash. I know you asked Danny about on-camera flash. I'll talk about this just for a second, but um, you can put this on any bracket or I can put it like right here if I wanted to and then actually I can turn this on right here because this takes batteries too and then if I want to I can make it flash right there and it's not even on anything at all. So I really like that about this. Um, I'll go over on ca on off camera flash sometime if you guys want to hear about it but I use the same flash for the same system. So one thing that you're also going to notice is it has this little thing right here. I'll turn this off so we don't have this. I have this great big thing. This is um, a separate thing that you can buy and if you just look up Young Duo flash covers this comes in a pack of three. It has um, a white one, a yellow one, and a blue one. And they're to be used in different lighting scenarios. Oh, that's lovely. Is it broken? Oh, I guess I can show you this too. Um, all of their flashes... Oh, this is broken. Maybe? Yeah, it is broken. That sucks. There it goes. Okay. So this one zooms in and out just like the other one. I won't flash you, I promise. But... Um, so see, I'm changing the zoom level. Ha ha! Okay, so both of these flashes have these little um, attachments on them. This one right here is a little, it's like an extra diffuser. That um, it just makes light kind of soften up a little bit more, but not a whole lot. And then they all have this. This is just a little white piece of plastic. And what this does is when you fire it, actually here I'll just fire it right here so if you fire it it actually makes the light you can see the light is pointing up so it's going to go straight up but it's also going to go out a little bit from um, from the flash head and it's going to hit this and this makes it bounce toward your subject um, it's not foolproof definitely I mean it's it's a very small amount of light but it is there if you do something like tip your um, your flash head down just a little bit when you're using it you're obviously going to get, it's going to create kind of a concentrated like this of your light. So I'm glad you're enjoying this. I need to follow you, by the way. Let me just add you real quick because I don't think I've followed. Yes, I am following you. Okay. Thanks, you, Crochet. Um, so that is kind of how that works. When I use a camera or when I use a flash on camera, I always use this. This is another flash diffuser. This takes the light that's going into this and it makes it go and it just makes it like fly everywhere. So what I can actually do is I can show you, why don't I just take some photographs of my crazy messy studio and then I'll let you see what it looks like. Um, in fact, why don't we do this? Why don't we put our Coke bottle on the studio? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my flash up to 1 16th just because I know that that's how bright it has to be in this room. I'm going to be zoomed in at 50 millimeters on my flash. But honestly, I don't really pay that much attention to the zoom. I do pay attention to the power level. Let me turn this light off real quick. Okay, so if I photograph that... Okay, so this bottle, let me show you what that looks like right here. So you can see the light is pretty flash, or it's flat. You can see there's a line down the middle where the flash is, which is okay. But this is from shooting it with the flash pointing straight at the Coke bottle. Let me take it off real quick and show you what the same picture looks like using my on-camera flash. 
right here. I think this is actually, now that I think about it, Danny, I think this is what you were talking about. So I'm sorry I didn't answer that question. Um, these flashes are pretty cool. But let me show you the same shot. Okay. Pull it up. Okay. So they're going to be really similar in how they look. Um, there's going to be a line, a line right down the middle because that's where the flash is. You can see there's no shadows on the left or the right because um, the shadow is directly behind the bottle. So you won't be able to see that at all. Um, what are some other things? Um, the other image is definitely brighter. So that's the one with the big flash. That's the one with the on-camera flash. Here's the cool thing about the on-camera flash, because I'm kind of just, I know I'm bouncing all over the place. I kind of assumed that you meant this one, and now I'm realizing that you didn't. So let me talk about this one a little bit. I use on I use the built-in flash when I'm out with my family. I don't walk around with this. I take that back. I do. I actually do. And I had two of them in my... Um, in my bag of stitches, so I do use this all the time, but um, if you follow my Instagram, which you can follow me on Instagram under the name ButterflyM4 if you're not already following me, um, if you, I was at a, I was at a carnival, and um, there was lights everywhere, and I wanted to take a picture of my family in front of all the lights, and so what I did was I I like to set my camera on manual whenever I use flash. Um, I'll show you what happens to that same image if I use the automatic flash. It's pretty similar. But um, if you do, if you put your camera in auto and then put the flash on it, it's actually the same image as it was last time. It's just not quite as bright. That's all. Okay, so. What I did was we were walking around this carnival, right? And there was the really cool carnival lights that were just everywhere. And um, I wanted to have my mom take a picture of our family. Well, what I did was I put my camera into manual mode, which on an icon is M, M for manual. And then I set my camera settings exactly where I wanted them to be to expose for just the lights at the carnival. Um, so, there were some things that I knew that I wanted, like I wanted um, to use a low aperture um, because I wanted the lights to be kind of blurry in the background, but not super blurry. So I used kind of a, I think I used f 5.6, maybe even higher. It might have been 6.5 because I had this lens on my camera. So, um, oops, I just turned it into live mode. Um, so I had it on f6.5 for my aperture and then I set it to, oh gosh, I don't even know what my settings are. I'd have to look up my settings, but my, my ISO was, essentially I exposed my photo correctly where if I took a picture of it as it was, it was properly exposed but my shutter speed was really slow. That was the problem I was running into was because my shutter speed had to be so slow. And if my mom moved it all or if the camera moved it all because it's really easy to let it for a camera to shake if you're using a slow aperture or sorry, a slow shutter speed. It's unless you're like bracing yourself if you're not using a tripod, it's almost impossible to have a clear crisp image um, when you're using a slow shutter speed. So what I did was I went ahead and turned on the on-camera flash for a couple reasons. On-camera flash will automatically expose your subject correctly. And that's really important. So I could have had the whole image exposed quite a bit lower or quite a bit higher, but it would the flash would have, well, not higher, but if I wanted to have like the whole rest of the image be like black, 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 I could have done that and then use the on-camera flash and it would have exposed just the subject correctly. Let me show you what I mean by this. So I'm going to I'm going to put my settings on here to be way too low. Does that make sense? So I'm going to put it at right there and then I'm going to put Okay, so we are like Do you see this right here? 
that means that I'm way underexposed in this image. So let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull this closer and I'm going to put some yarn that I have back here. Oh, you can't see that. Um, let's put our dummy card right here. Okay. And I'm going to get really close to the bottle right here, okay? So I'm going to get really, really close to the bottle and I'm going to turn on my flash. I got too close and the lens is too big. So I'm gonna go just a little bit further out, but not a lot. This isn't quite working how I wanted it to, but that's okay. Okay, so you saw that I was like crazy underexposed for the image, but when I put it on here, it's actually pretty close to perfectly exposed. That circle on the bottom is just because the lens is so big. I can put my small lens on and try the same experiment. But I was way underexposed and all I did, so I'm in manual mode still, and all I did was turn on the flash, and the, the camera is smart and it knows exactly how to expose correctly to make your image be properly exposed with the flash. So what was cool was um, I exposed for the lights, to make the lights look correct in the um, carnival. Oh, gosh, words are not coming. So I exposed correctly for the lights in the carnival, so the lights look really nice and beautiful and, you know, lots of bouquet and, like, that kind of stuff like that. But then I just handed my mom the camera and I gave her the flash and exposed for my family properly. The other cool thing about flash is that a flash goes off at about one one or it's like one twenty thousandth of a second it looks like it's a lot longer to our eyes but it's really not so let me show you a cool trick about flash okay let's say that this line and this line are your shutter speed so here's when your shutter speed starts click and then your shutters open and then it goes click okay your flash is like this. So here's your start, click, bing, click, right? So that's your shutter speed. One twenty thousandth of a second is going to freeze your subject, no matter what they are doing. It is so fast that a flash will freeze your subject. So I like to use, I always use flash if I'm, if I'm photographing somebody like a dancer or an athlete of some kind. Um, we did a photo shoot with a cheerleader where we made her um, jump up in the air and do, you know, one of her split kind of things up in the air. And um, we actually had to put a couple flashes on her because it wasn't covering um, her whole body with the flash. It wasn't like, it was like getting, you know, this part of her body and then one leg and then the other leg would be blurry because she wasn't, the camera wasn't, um, the shutter wasn't moving fast enough to compensate for that. And so... Um, your flash will freeze whatever subject. So it was really cool because in that picture of the carnival, you can see like the lights are gray and um, everything, but there's a woman walking behind us and you can see that she's blurry and it looks kind of like a ghost because she wasn't close enough to the flash for it to compensate for that correctly. So um, that's how I use that's how I use my flash. So um, I don't like to use on-camera flash very much because as you can see, from the picture, um, the light is like directly straight on and it doesn't create a very interesting light. So um, you can see, like I said, the line is right down the middle. Whereas what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna put this back on. This is my little handy dandy transmitter. And then I'll put this back on my bracket and I'll show you what um, what you can do if you take it off camera. And then I'm going to have to go because I hear my kids just got home from school. So I'll do this one more thing and then we'll call it good for the day. So I'm going to put this right in the middle back where it was and then we'll test it real quick. 
after. I'm going to take you guys over a little bit so you can see kind of what I'm doing. So I put my, my flash is now inside this great big soft box. Um, and then I'll, I'll test it. There it goes. Okay. Whew, sorry. Okay. So focus on the same thing. Oh, and it's too low. Okay. Um, let me fix my settings real quick. Okay, so let me show you the difference now between those two images. Okay, I'll just delete the ones on in camera. Don't delete pictures in camera, it's bad. Don't follow my lead. Okay, so here's the picture that we took before. Hey, with the flash on the camera, with the flash pointing straight at the bottle, you can see the light in the middle. This is the picture that I just took with the flash off the camera. Do you see the difference? The shadow is on the right side, your left I suppose, um, with the glare on the other side. So even just that one little change of putting the flash off camera, off to the side, made a huge difference in the photo. Um, and then what you can do is if you have multiple flashes, like I do, you can do what's called slave mode. Let me turn this on. I'm so excited. Can you tell? Okay. So this is called slave mode. Do so you see the S one? So we have manual mode. I don't speak French. Sorry. S mode which is slave mode. And then I have another S2. I don't know what that does. I think it's just different settings for the slave mode and then multi. I'm not really sure what that does either. I got to learn this stuff, but so I'm going to put it in slave mode. This tells the flash to fire if it sees another flash. That's the whole purpose of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it right here. I really got to go. My kids are home. Okay. I just get so excited. Okay. So I'm putting this at a quarter of the power of the other flash. So this flash is set at 116. This one is set at 164th. It's a quarter of the power of the other flash. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that same picture of the Coke bottle. And I'll explain to you why I did the different powers. Actually, let me take another one where they're at the same power. Okay, so right now they're going to be at the same power. Okay, this is so much fun, you guys. I'm having so much fun. Okay, so this is the image that we got. Can you see that there's a shadow on either side of the Coke bottle? So now, let me get out of highlight mode. So now you can see the shadow from two sides, so now you can tell that I used two lights. You can also see what is called the spectral highlights on the top of the bottle, which are the two different lights on the top. It's just the reflection of two different lights. Yep, exactly. Um, I did the original shot with the flash over here at a quarter of the power as this one. Because now there's still the spectral highlight, which I like, but you only see one shadow. Does that make sense? Let me see if I can focus on this for you. No, it won't let me focus. So you can only see one shadow, so it's not strong enough to make a big shadow on the other side, but you still get the spectral highlight to make it look really cool. So that is kind of how I do multiple flash setup. But I really have to go because my kids are home. If you think of photography questions that you want me to cover in the future, you can find me at ButterflyM4 on Instagram. You can um, join the Ravelry group. You can listen to the Knitting Butterflies podcast. Thank you guys so, so, so much for joining me today. This was so much fun. And this is exactly what I'm going to be using Periscope for. So I hope to talk to you soon. Bye.